Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to the parallel session A, which is the HPC standards, applications and data, uh, cloud usage. Uh, our first speakers are Christine Rhodes and James Clark on, from Chevron. They're going to be talking about the OSDU forum. Hi. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Christine Rhodes. I'm uh, with Chevron in the subsurface digital platform team. And uh, both James and I are very excited to talk to you about OSDU and the HPC project going on the OSDU. Can you hear me all right? Is this volume? If we're okay? Okay. And so, show of hands, who has heard of the OSDU? Oh, you guys are already, are you already experts in the OSDU? No, perfect. This is the perfect plan. Okay. So let's uh, jump right in. Okay. So the OSDU came together in uh, about mid-2018, and it came together as an industry form uh, as the Open Subsurface Data Universe. So really, we came to create, uh, we have three main objectives. The first is to create a cloud-native, open, subsurface data platform with usable implementations for Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, IBM Cloud, and Google Cloud Platform. Now, the interesting thing about that, two, two parts. One, it's going to be open. That means for us it's going to be open source. As soon as we get to release three, this is going into the open source community domain. And that's a big change for the oil and gas space. Um, it's a little bit scary, but we also think this is the future. It's really awesome. So that is exciting. The second piece of that that's important is that we are creating usable reference implementations. That means we've got working code. This proves that this isn't just you know, another paper standard that's kind of hard to implement. Working code is king when you're trying to get some new stuff done in this digital world. So we're excited about that. The second objective that we're trying to achieve is to create those standard OSDU APIs. We want to separate our data from our applications in our legacy environment where really our data is held very hostage in our different data silos. We want to use those APIs to separate the data out but be able to have our cloud native applications connect seamlessly back to that data through the platform. And finally, we want to use uh, existing data standards where, you know, where they exist. So WITSML, ResQML, we're not looking to recreate those things. But we also understand that what we're going to be trying to tackle is a little bit new, and there may not be data standards in all of those areas. So we'll have some work to do when we get there. So why are we doing this? Well, from an operator perspective, uh, we really want to standardize and unify on just an upstream data platform. Uh, this allows us to focus on the truly differentiating pieces of our business. It's not competitive for us as an operator to really dive down into storage. We want the people where that is competitive, our cloud vendors, to compete for performance, price, that sort of thing. We want to reduce the resource and cost burden of independently designing and validating uh, a data platform. It just doesn't make sense for us to do that alone and independently when we can do it together. We want to influence and accelerate those key reference components that are going to be the foundation for our subsurface digital transformation. And we want to enable uh, secure, reliable, global, and performant access to our subsurface data, our wells data, um, for our new cloud-native data-driven applications. Now, what we really believe about all of this is that it's going to lower that barrier of entry for a lot of our suppliers and vendors. We want to see an acceleration of innovation coming to the market because we've got a wide customer base that is going to be using this OSDU platform, allowing for vendors to come in and just connect in with those standard APIs. As you can see, we're busy, we're growing. So at about the end of last year, uh, 2019, we had 133 different companies um, from multiple different industry areas, so very cross-industrial, um, which is exciting and it makes it a little bit different than what we've tried to do before. So cloud vendors, uh, our, our typical supplier partners, lots of operators, um, academia, all involved and really happy to have this progress. So with this expertise, with this knowledge from this vast group of people, we, the OSDU has already put out release one at the end of last year and we're quickly coming up to release release two at the end of this month. So I want to talk just a little bit about the governance of the OSDU. You'll look at that top line and you'll see uh, we've got our OSDU focal points, which is representative of each company within the OSDU. So right now there's 
133 plus companies, and each company has one vote. Now, recent, uh, and they really use that vote to kind of narrow down the scope and vision of where we want the OSDU to go. Recently, we uh, held a vote to put in place the OSDU Management Committee. So this OMC Management Committee really helps us uh, do some of that next level of agile guidance, um, decision making, and governance. So that's pretty important too. It helps us move a little bit faster, make decisions faster, and they give us a lot of very specific direction on where we want to go for 2020 through seven different theme areas. But what you'll see kind of in the bottom boxes is we've got, oh, 28 or so projects. They're not all up here. They're still kicking off new projects. But we've got about 28 active projects going on. Um, and so on the, on the far side, you have all of the standards projects. So putting those together, how are we going to build this foundation? How are we going to define our data definitions? And then you have the execution of those standards on uh, the side here, closest to me for the execution of that through software. So that's kind of a high level overview of what that governance looks like. And at this point, I'd like to introduce my colleague, James Clark, who is also leading the OSDU uh, High Performance Computing Project. So the, uh, can you hear me okay on my mic? Okay, so uh, the High Performance Computing Project is, is a child of the Enterprise Architecture Subcommittee. Uh, there are four subcommittees across here, and we all have a, a shared backlog as we trying to find the standards, uh, get these approved to have them executed by, by the, uh, the left-hand side of what's happening here. Now, I've starred two uh, projects. One is the high-performance computing, and the, the other one is the connected external data sources, or third-party data sources. So a little bit uh, of, of crossover between those two. Um, the high-performance computing project uh, started at the tail end of last year. Uh, we tried to get a few people together at Supercomputing in Denver, and we had a, had a little breakfast and discussed it. Um, but essentially, we've just been kicking off uh, this year to hopefully define some of the, the standards and the things that we need uh, in the OSDU platform. So I'm going to take a step back a little bit because my eyesight is terrible. Um, okay, so this is the, the 30,000 feet view of uh, the basic architecture of what OSDU is, is meant to be uh, delivering. Uh, Christine said already, it's a public cloud-based data platform. So it's all of the data. You know, the, 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 the vision is that uh, there's not going to be any more silos of data are spread around all over the place. Uh, it's going to be completely cloud native, um, but it does still provide support for legacy applications based on files and you know, fat windows, uh, technical desktops, blades, workstations, uh, VDI, however you want to connect to it through those legacy frameworks. But on top of that, the majority of the work is going to be on making this as cloud native as possible. Uh, and down here, it's basically, uh, because it's an open standard, it allows um, operators not to have to waste time on, on the things that are, are common across Azure, AWS, doesn't matter. These guys are going to come up with a reference implementation that provides that baseline platform services. And then it's the value add pieces that uh, you connect through the, these uh, uh, standardized APIs. So the HPC project, um, because we've just started, the very first thing we have to do is define what we're actually, actually going to do. So our scope it's pretty much uh, down to two, uh, two main focus areas. One is the existing HPC use case, uh, and two is the new and emerging use case. So on the existing use cases, we have to look at um, where the intersections are going to be with the data platform and what's already happening in HPC. 90% of what we do is on the image, okay? The seismic imaging, so that's, that's key that we have uh, really good discussions around that and, and the FWI and the inversions and so on. Second piece of that around the modeling halfway through the subsurface workflow, we're going to have to do some reservoir modeling, reservoir engineering work. Uh, and then we're going to you know, look at what we're already doing in the space. There's new uh, customers coming out all the time who want to use HPC uh, for their engines. So that's the existing uh, traditional HPC use cases. But we've also been tasked to look at what's coming up in the future. Um, down the line, when, when we're fully integrated, there's going to be more crossovers between this data platform and what HPC does. When we get towards the cloud native uh, workflows and we don't have workstations anymore, there's going to be still compute that needs to be done. Um, there was some talk earlier this morning about uh, uh, on-demand computing and BGF style uh, uh, file systems, ephemeral file systems uh, on demand, the intersection with uh, artificial intelligence uh, and the deep learning and uh, uh, all the other 
pieces associated with, with what's going to be happening or what we, can, what we think is going to be happening in the next couple of years. So that's the two main asks. So ensure that the OSDU releases or future releases are, are uh, HPC aware and uh, HPC knows about OSDU. But it's very important that um, OSDU is a cloud-based data platform. I think I put there on the, the slide, the first slide, the previous slide, that we know that HPC is not necessarily cloud-based. When it comes to the heavy lifting, the 90% of the workflow that we currently do, um, we're not going to be able to say a standard, hey, all of this FWI work is going into the cloud. That's, you know, that's not going to happen. So we have to make sure, as we're interfacing with the other OSDU groups, that we say that the HPC workflows are not hindered by the standards that they're trying to develop. And it's the same on the, on the other way. New HPC workload and new HPC capabilities shouldn't be strictly bound if it's something that isn't currently in OSDU. So uh, Christine said release one is already out there. Uh, that happened at the end of the year, uh, end of last year. Release two is coming up uh, in, a, in a month's time. And release three is going to be the second half of the year. Now, the scope grows. Uh, you know, the pieces of the APIs that are available it is, is increasing uh, as we go through the different releases. Release two is very important, and that's why, um, while it was being uh, scoped, the uh, HPC component and project was stood up. Because it's been called the seismic release. It deals with seismic data, but it's not from a uh, seismic imaging standpoint. It's very much in the interpretation space. But it's very... Uh, 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 very important because it's, it's also known as a common code release when OpenDES and OpenVDS is combined into, into basically a rework, and a lot of the release one code was actually thrown away. So this is the Blueware uh, VDS. Well, they, they, they submitted uh, their own uh, open source pieces to this uh, back at the inception. Slumberjay threw in their uh, open components of VES uh, back in September. So there's been a lot of work going on in uh, getting this release to ready and uh, the additional services that, it, uh, that it's going to provide. Now, it's not production ready at this point. We're still calling it developer ready. Um, production ready, or sorry, deployment ready is what we get in release three. So although we threw away a lot of the code between release one and two, release three is building very much on what's happened um, or happening now. So release three is due uh, in the second half of the year and uh, it's optimized for uh, uh, seismic via these uh, different uh, uh, file system types. And there's meant to be uh, up to 70 services available in release three by the time that comes out. It also offers uh, multi-region in the basic uh, 30,000 feet architecture slide there. You saw that it was in and out components for uh, uh, in-country where you can't actually have uh, the uh, central uh, system running in a, you know, if there's data sovereignty laws or something like that. You, the metadata is uh, replicated through all of the OSDU instances from an actual company, but the, uh, uh, the data itself would still re reside in country if it needs to. So that, that's what it needs there by multi-region as well. So a little bit, I'll take another step back. So where are we uh, for the intersection of what OSDU is trying to do, what we declare as being the subsurface workflow, and what HPC currently does? So 90% of what we're already doing is this, uh, you know, the parallel I.O., the big scratch file systems, the luster, the HPC imaging. That happens currently before it gets ingested into OSDU. So at some point in this workflow, you have to click a button, you have to actually decide, you know, this, this image, this is our finished image, we're going to interpret on this image, and that's when it is going to be available to be loaded into uh, R3 when that's available. Now, at that point, that means that we are not actually, from a HPC standpoint, part of the... Um, part of the internal workings of what that data store is. So we are technically a connected data source from third-party data source, even though for, we're from the same company. It just means that we're not part of the, the data ecosystem yet. Um, but future releases are going to increase the load uh, of what happens in OSDU. Currently, it's not, they're not talking about modeling and, and the reservoir pieces. You know, we have the release 2.3, which deals with seismic interpretation, some basic seismic interpretation and release one that we already had, which was based on the Wells data. But that is going to fill in the gaps, and you see the gaps in the uh, uh, gray bits where I've actually put the, the titles there. There's going to be a component in HPC where we have to help them out with a little bit of the interpretation, so the on-demand and the AI and whatever happens there in the future. 
And then in release four, which isn't called release four yet, but after release three, we're going to be looking at uh, you know having to deal with data that has already been ingested into OSDU. Is how we're going to have reservoir modeling and our other already traditional HPC uh, use cases. So uh, we have 21 members in the HPC project. Here's all the uh, uh, companies that they represent. There are seven operators. Uh, and to the point from the initial scope, the whole point of the HPC project is to define the intersection of traditional HPC workflows and uh, future HPC workflows with where that lies in the subsurface uh, data uh, path. We've got a couple face-to-faces. Hopefully, we'll get to go to Amsterdam. There's still a travel ban, potentially. I don't know. But we're, we're scheduled to go to Amsterdam in a couple of weeks' time uh, to do some uh, uh, face -to -face, at the face-to-face -face and uh, do some workshops, and also here in Houston. Um, so Christine mentioned every company uh, as a focal point already. And so if you haven't uh, registered, or, or you know, go and talk to your focal point if you want to take part in this to help us define how we're going to do this. That's it. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Oh. Oh, oh. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it's Can you hear me? Okay. So HPC in and of itself can be a fairly latency sensitive um, collection of applications. And in and of itself, RESTful APIs or service-based APIs are very forgiving in the latency domain. Milliseconds are fine. What's the vision for addressing those types of differences between the architectures of those? Okay, so, so a lot of the work as we've said already, uh, we are going to be an external data source, potentially for a lot of what HPC workflows do. So that 90%, you know, the, the FWI codes, the RTM, all the inversion, that's still potentially going to be on-prem or whatever. There's probably more talks today and tomorrow about how everybody's you know, starting to work in the cloud now. But um, uh, yeah, th that is the whole point of... of, of the HPC project is to say to the enterprise architecture group that maybe these APIs don't work for us. Maybe we need additional ways to access that data. Maybe we need file access. Maybe we need uh, uh, copy in and out mechanisms uh, for, I mentioned the ephemeral style data workflows that we're potentially going to have in the future. So all of that has to be kind of defined uh, as this moves forward. Hello. How do you consider HPC as a service in the OS deal? So it's true. So the, there's potential opportunities for this as well. Again, as we define how we work in the future, there's going to be, I think, uh, the, the architecture slide says it's all kind of services based and Kubernetes based. Um, after you said Kubernetes, you can just drop the mic and walk out. Um, but, you know, it's, it's going to be potential. You know, it, it's going to be a thing. There's a question back. Okay. Oh, maybe you can just shout. <laughs> uh, Sh uh, Sharath from Microsoft, but not at all the noise to you. So I'm more curious about how, how do you think, what, what will be the physical artifacts of OSD? Where, like will, um, you mentioned it will be on AWS and America. Uh, and how uniform will they be across the clouds? Do you have like a standard of whether it's going to be a product? It's going to, you, can you go spin up something in these clouds? What is the artifacts that you, we will actually see as users? Sure, okay, so I've got uh, 50 seconds there. Uh, the, the reference uh, architecture is, is not, it, it, AWS has its own implementation of the reference architecture. Microsoft has its own implementation of the architecture and Google and, and, uh, and IBM. Um, and when it comes to an operator, you have to reach out to your cloud vendor of choice, and they will provide you a shiny new, empty, open uh, baseline OSDU architecture. Wait a second. Okay, uh, we're just about on time. So again, thank you very much. Thank you.